Hi, I'm Aki and welcome to the final episode of this series. In this episode, we're going to look at how to render your build using Blender. So for this tutorial, I'm going to render this clock tower right here, also known as the English clock tower, as it's a local landmark. The first thing we're going to do is select the area we want to render with a world edit. You can do this with poly or with a cuboid. Poly is usually more time consuming, but you get a better result. I'm now going to expand the region so it includes all of the clock tower. Once we're done, we're going to copy the build and I suggest doing it somewhere where you can remember the block you were standing on. And then we'll do schematic, save and the name of your schematic. Now we'll have to ask a server admin or someone that has access to the service files for the schematic. Some servers like the BT Konosur server have a discord bot and you can get the schematic with a command. For the Konosur server, it's slash schematic, and then you fill out the schematic name. And you'll get a DM with the schematic. Then we'll copy the schematic and paste it in our schematics folder. So we'll go to the dot build the earth folder, or if you're not using the mod pack and are on newer versions of the game, then instead of pasting the schematic in the build the earth folder, you'll head over to the Minecraft folder. So we'll head over to config, world edit, and schematics and we'll paste the schematic here then we're going to head over to single player and create a new world if you're on 1.12 make sure that you have cubic chunks turned off while creating the world and we're going to want it to be a super flat world i personally like having a barrier layer and not going straight for a void world because barriers won't show up in our render and they'll prevent any falling blocks we have from falling into the void if you don't know how to create that barrier layer, here's the preset code. You can also find it down in the description. That 132 value is the biome. I have it set to flower forest because that was my original server biome. Right, so we're gonna create the world and immediately go over to options and change the difficulty to peaceful because we don't want any mobs spawning in our builds. We'll also type in these four game rules, which you can find in the description. And these are gonna prevent mob spawning, prevent weather cycles and random tick speed to zero because we don't want things like fires breaking out. Now it's time to paste our schematic. I distance myself from the barrier layer so the build gets placed on top of it. And if there are any falling blocks on my floor, the barriers will stop them from falling into the void. Then we load our schematic. And now we're going to want to activate fast mode, paste the build, and deactivate fast. If you're on 1.12, you're going to have to paste the schematic with fast mode activated. If you're on newer versions, you're going to have to type double slash perf and then make sure validation is off, neighbors is off, and lighting is on. And then you paste the schematic. So since I'm in 1.12 here, I'm going to have to leave and rejoin the game. Now, these next steps are going to be 1.12 exclusive. So if your build is on the newer versions, skip to the timestamp that's on screen right now. If you're on 1.12, we could export the build right now, but then all of the banners and all of the heads would not be exported. So we're going to start a process for us to be able to export them. We want to quit the game for that. Then we'll head back over to our build the earth folder saves. And once we've located our world, we're going to copy it, then head over to the Minecraft folder and paste the world here. We're also going to want to transfer the schematic file. Copy our schematic and paste it in the same folder but in the .minecraft directory. Now obviously to even have a world edit folder in your .minecraft directory, you have to have world edit installed on the newer versions. I have world edit installed with Forge for 1.16.5. If you don't have a newer modded Minecraft version, you're gonna have to get one and install the world edit yourself. Like I said, I have world edit on 1.16.5, so we'll open that version up. Once the game is open, we'll head over to our tutorial world. This message will appear. We click, I know what I'm doing. And a little spoiler, things are going to break like the message said. That's why we imported our schematic to this Minecraft version too. Right, the world has finished loading. I also have the journey map mod on this version and make sure all of your chunks get loaded each time you update. And like I said, most of the legal blocks are broken. And in order to fix this, we're gonna move the player to the exact block where we copied the schematic originally. 
and then we're gonna execute this gms command. I'll leave the full command in the description. If we were to paste the schematic on top of our current build without the gmask, every single block that has connections will lose those connections. Another weird thing that happens if you don't use this gmask is that head textures get a little cursed and show up as some weird baby Steve. I'll have an image of them up on screen right now. So we'll run the gmask and then we'll type double slash perf. And we'll make sure lighting is on, neighbors is off, and validation is off. After that's done, we'll load in our schematic. And then we'll paste it. Now, because we have the Gmask activated, pasting normally or pasting without air actually makes no difference. Except pasting without air can cause less lag. And we'll immediately notice that every broken block has been restored. Now, one issue that still persists is doors. Doors, for some reason, remained glitched out and you have to manually fix them. Now, it took a lot of time for me to find a solution to things that get broken with fast. Um, there was also an issue with cobblestone walls that would disappear, but there's actually a block there, but there actually isn't, and heads turning into that baby Steve, and all sorts of weird stuff. I went through a lot of iterations of methods, and the one we're doing in this tutorial is the best one I've found so far. But if you have any idea ideas on how we might fix the doors, then please let me know. Right, now we have two options. Option one is to export the build now. I used to do that, but I found an issue with it. And that issue is that for some reason, the grass path block doesn't have a texture if we export it on 1.16.5. As you import it into Blender, every single grass path block gets a no texture color. So how do we fix that? We close up the game. And then we open that world in vanilla 1.20. Right, so here we are in Minecraft 1.20.1, and we'll open up our world. Again, make sure every chunk gets loaded, and we opened up a vanilla world because we won't have issues here with blocks breaking. And now everything's ready to export. And we'll go over to this link, you can find it in the description, and we'll download this JMC2 OBJ program. Just download the latest version, and then we'll open it. We'll go to these three dots, and we'll select our tutorial world folder. If it's a bit slow, you can click fast render. We're going to select what we want to render, and click export. We'll leave everything here to its default values. Export threads is the amount of memory you want to dedicate to this export operation. Convert all ore blocks to stone. This is useful if you have a lot of terrain under your build. I personally like to clean this up manually in Minecraft because I use ore blocks in my builds. Then we click export and choose a save folder. And once it says exporting textures 100%, then it's done. I use Blender on a different PC because this one doesn't have the specs for it. So we're gonna head over there. Right, so we're in Blender. We're gonna click outside of that box to get rid of it and delete everything that's on here. We'll now go over to File, Import, Wavefront. And we'll select our OBJ file and import it. Once our file has loaded in, we'll go over here and select viewport shading and we'll see the textures now. And we'll go to add and add a camera. We'll click over here, go over to view and check these two boxes. That will allow us to move the camera around using the same keys we used to move around in Blender. We can also head over here and manually change the camera's position and rotation. Everything that's inside of that orange rectangle is what's going to get rendered. Once our camera is in a position we like, we exit camera view so we can move around freely without interfering with our shot. And we'll add a floor. We'll go to add mesh plane and holding down the S key and moving our mouse around, we can increase its size. We'll now select the mesh and go to the shader editor. We're going to click on new and we're going to turn our plane into a mirror that reflects our build and the sky. So we'll crank up metallic to the max 
if our roughness value is zero, then it's going to give us a perfect reflection. It's going to have a mirror like finish. As we increase the value, the reflection is going to look rougher and rougher. This depends on the effect you're trying to achieve with your build. And we won't see any reflections because we're not on the cycles render engine yet. We're going to use the cycles engine to render the image, but we're staying on Eve for now because it's less laggy when moving stuff around. And you can also see the image clearly. With cycles, every time you move something, it has to re-render the image, so it's always very grainy. We'll go over here and click on cycles. If you have a GPU, use a GPU. Render samples, um, the default amount of samples is totally fine. I personally choose 5000 because, I don't know, I like 5000. The more samples you have, the less noise your build is going to have. But you can see we also have denoise ticked, so that already decreases a lot of the noise. If you select the camera and then go down here, you can change the camera settings, add a depth of field for example, change the aperture settings. Well, you can play around with that. Now, let's add a background, a skybox. We're going to go to this web page right here. Link is going to be in the description. And we're going to head over to HDRIs. And you'll find skies here. You can choose whichever one you like, though there are a few restrictions. First restriction, it has to be a sky. So this one is an interior, which is not going to work well. And I recommend looking for one that has as little stuff as possible. Like, you want to look for a sky that doesn't have any mountains, buildings, or big trees in the way. Because if it does have those things, that's going to show up in your render. So, one like this one is perfect, because it does have trees, but they're small and far away, and we can work around that. Once you find one you like, we're going to go ahead and download it, and make sure the extension is set to EXR. And the quality is really up to you, but a few things about this. If you download a 20K HDRI, that's going to increase the render time on your build. The file size is going to be very high, and your render won't be 20K anyway. So why do you need a 20K HDRI if your render is going to be 4K max? And once you choose your file, you go over to the world settings, click on color here, select environment texture, and it's going to look really ugly, but click on open and find the file you've just downloaded. Once the skybox has finished loading, I switched back to Eve so I can maneuver easily. And we have our sky, but this terrain is in the way. We'll fix this by going to Shader Editor, selecting our world, and we're gonna go to Add, Input, Texture Coordinate. Then go to Add, Vector, Mapping, join vector with vector, and generate it with vector, and go back to our viewport. Then we'll go to world properties, and here's the mapping node we've added, and we're going to change the type to texture. And now we can change the environmental texture's position. What we want to do is lower it down slowly until we reach the point where the terrain goes just below our plane. You'll see that I typed minus 0.1 and I overshot. Why do we want to find that perfect point? Well, because as the height increases, the sky gets distorted. The amount of clouds significantly diminishes. The clouds that are there get bigger and the quality decreases. So I personally like to have it such as the sky's terrain is just below my mesh. Enough for it not to be seen, but not overshooting. You can do whatever you want with this, of course. If you want to keep the terrain, you can keep it. You can even rotate the texture around. Say if you have a sunset environmental texture and you wanted the sun to hit at a certain angle, you can rotate the texture around in order to get that just like you want it. You can also change that strength value down there to increase or decrease the amount of light you want this environmental texture to give off. You can really customize it to get your render to look exactly as you want. You can also head over here and change the resolution. It comes as 180 by default, but I'm going to change it to 4K. Now I'm going to show you how you can create realistic water. My build doesn't have water, so I'm going to do this with grass. But what you have to do is go over here on the search bar and search for water. And if your build has water, then your search results are probably going to bring up two materials, stationary water and moving water. You need to do the same thing I'm now going to do for the grass texture, but for the stationary water texture and for the moving water texture. So I selected my grass texture right here. Then you'll go over to the shader editor, select these nodes, 
and delete them. Then go to add output and click on material output. We'll also add a noise texture and a glass BSDF node. We'll connect BSDF to surface and color to displacement. We'll input these values as our color. And by playing around with the parameters in the noise texture node, we're going to be able to change the amount of waves and how big those waves are going to be. Remember, you have to do this for both water textures. So if we go back to our 3D viewport, you'll see that our grass turned into this water texture. Right, so I turned the grass back into grass and now we'll go on to render our image. We're in our cycles render engine. Everything is set up. Remember, you can customize your camera over here. And once everything is done, we're going to go to image and render image. This is probably going to take a while. Render time depends on how many samples you're rendering, how big your build is, the resolution of your environmental texture, your PC specs, among other factors. Once it's done, we'll go to image, save as. If you want, you can set your color to either 8 or 16 bits and we'll save the image. And that's how you render your build. This is where the series ends with this beautiful build in the background. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you around. Bye.